Tech family, the moment I saw this laptop with its combination of the new Ryzen 4 500U processor added NVIDIA MX350 graphics for $550, I knew I had to try. Seriously, I've been wanting to see how potent a new Ryzen processor with a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card would be in a budget laptop for some time. Plus, I've been wanting to see how Asus's budget laptops stack up with my current favorite, the incredibly popular IdeaPad 5. Look, I value your time, so I'm just gonna get down to it. I really like this laptop. It is the best option I've seen for video editing on a budget, and today, I'm going to show you why. I'm also going to tell you why I still prefer the IdeaPad 5 15 for casual users and coders. By the way, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video, you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the incredible amount of work that goes into making these. Just a quick note here, this isn't going to be quite as in-depth as I normally go in my reviews, as I wanted to rush a video out for you because there is just so much exciting stuff to cover about it. If this video does become popular though, I'll probably do a follow-up review. Anyway, let's start with performance. The Ryzen 4 500U is already a very capable processor and for CPU related tasks, this laptop performs similar to the IdeaPad 5 15 that I tested in Geekbench. However, in Cinebench, which maxes out the CPU, it performs a bit worse, but it's still in the same ballpark. The good news here is it runs quieter. In fact, its fan is hardly ever audible in light use, and even when running the Cinebench benchmark or exporting a 4K video from Premiere Pro, it was very quiet. It's definitely quieter for light usage than the IdeaPad 5, both the 14 and 15 inch versions. That being said, it does get warmer to the touch than those laptops, but nothing uncomfortable like the furnace known as the Dell XPS 9300. Back to the performance results and take a look how this laptop beats that far more expensive Dell XPS 9300 as well as the new 10th gen equipped MacBook Pros. But what I was most eager to see is how much the included Nvidia MX350 graphics boosted performance. Even though the MX350 is not that powerful, it beat the internal graphics of Ryzen by almost 50% in both Geekbench's graphics test as well as Firestrikes. So definitely worth it. Where it really helped though was in Premiere Pro doing a standard 4K H.264 export, which is a very common task for YouTubers like me. You can see here just how much faster this laptop is than the IdeaPad 5 15 without that dedicated graphics. Now, some folks will say that this is a Premiere problem and it's not optimized for Ryzen's internal graphics. This may be true. However, that is a benefit of having NVIDIA's graphics. More programs are optimized for NVIDIA's CUDA when it comes to rendering and encoding because it's been out a longer time. So moral of the story is this, this laptop is a better all round performer than other laptops with only an AMD Ryzen U CPU. Oh, and take a peek at how this little $550 laptop destroys expensive laptops with Intel's 10th gen CPU and their new G7 graphics on that same test. Moving along, the next major thing I like about this laptop is the display. It is far more color accurate than the displays in my idea pads. It's a step above and you really do notice the difference. In fact, this is the only laptop I've ever seen at this price range with such a color accurate display. This with a combination of the dedicated graphics means that this is the only laptop I'd consider for photo or video editing so far in the sub 800 US dollar price range. By the way, the display has very good viewing angles. However, my unit unfortunately had a decent amount of backlight bleed. Unlike my IdeaPad 5 15, which came with a touchscreen, this Asus ZenBook 14 did not. The laptop has ample ports, including HDMI, USB-C, three USB-A, and a micro SD card reader. What's great is the USB ports are all the faster USB 3.1 Gen 2. Normally, I'd only see Gen 1 in this price range. The keyboard is comfortable to use with good key travel. Amazing how Asus can put a comfortable keyboard in their laptop, but Apple can't do it with their non-magic keyboards in their latest MacBook Pros, which costs more than double. The laptop comes with eight gig of RAM in dual channel mode, which is good. It also comes with Wi-Fi 6. <clears throat> Apple, again, seriously, how can this little cheap laptop have Wi-Fi 6, but your MacBook Pro 13 for 2020 can't? It does open with one hand and comes with Windows Hello facial recognition. On that note, the back of the laptop does lift off the table when you open it for increased airflow, which is good. I was concerned the edge of the bottom of the screen would cut into my leg and be uncomfortable on my lap. I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't at all. The weight of the laptop is excellent. It's super portable at 2.5 pounds or 1.15 kilograms. And the form factor of this laptop is very compact. Here it is next to my IdeaPad 5 14. Battery life is good. I was getting around six hours doing word processing with the screen at max brightness. It's a little smaller than the IdeaPad 5 15's battery at 50 watts compared to 57. 
Lastly, the price of this laptop is just stupid. I bought mine on a July 4th sale for $550, which is epic. So that's a lot of pros, right? Let's get into the cons. This laptop can't be charged by the USB-C port. This is really frustrating in 2020. Charging by the USB-C port is just so convenient as there's so many devices converging on that standard, so you'll find plenty of those chargers available. I have seen some USB-C to barrel pin charger converters available on Amazon that supposedly will enable you to charge off a USB-C power adapter, but I haven't tried any, so can't speak to their reliability. What elevates this issue is that the adapter the laptop comes with is very short, so you'll probably be using it in combination with an extension cord. The keyboard, although comfortable to type on, has some negatives. It's very hard to see the keys in many lighting conditions because the key color is white on silver, which doesn't offer a lot of contrast between the colors. Plus, the backlight is not very strong at all. Heck, even in daylight, the shadow caused by the screen on the secondary function keys makes them hard to read. Also, and importantly, the placement of the function key on the right side is where you'd expect the right arrow key to be, which causes me to sometimes mishit it. The trackpad is a little too slippery for my liking, and I found myself struggling to be accurate with it, even though it uses the Windows Precision drivers. Honestly, the keyboard and trackpad on the IdeaPad 515 is just better. Normally, I write these reviews on the device I'm reviewing, but in this case, I switched mid-script to complete it on the IdeaPad 515 as I just didn't find this laptop as comfortable. The next thing is that the build quality of the laptop is pretty good for a plastic laptop, but it just isn't on the same level as the IdeaPad 515 and 14. Although, as I mentioned, the performance is very good in this laptop, one part that is a letdown is the SSD speeds. This is one of the slowest SSDs I've seen in a laptop in a very long time. That being said, I really don't think it will affect most people who will buy this laptop, but I still felt it worth me calling out. The sound gets surprisingly loud, which is good, but, 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 the bass is just not there at all. It's like listening to music where there is only mid-range and treble playing. Also, the speakers are downward facing, so expect a lot less volume when using this laptop on your lap. Like the Redmi Book, I struggled to get the back off the laptop as there are two screws underneath the rubber feet that I couldn't get at without ripping them off the laptop, which I don't want to do. Even so, I did some research and it seems the RAM is soldered and not user upgradable, but that's the same as the IdeaPads. Compared to the similar priced IdeaPad 515, you are losing out on that bigger screen and the 512 gig faster SSD. Lastly, I did find on several occasions when I closed the lid, the laptop did not correctly go into standby and it became very warm in my backpack. I thought that sort of thing was a thing of the past. Folks, I need to update you on two issues that appeared late in the review. Although Premiere Pro exported correctly and fast the first time, on additional exports, I did get this error you see on screen, both in Premiere Pro and also Media Encoder. Two, the sound stopped working, both from the speakers and headphones. As you can see here, I'm playing one of my YouTube videos and you can't hear anything even though the audio is up. It's weird as it was originally working. I did update all the drivers and BIOS etc, call Aces tech support and they couldn't fix the issue. So I will be returning mine to Best Buy. I did search the net including Reddit and other reviews and no one else is reporting this. So I assume it's just my unit. But if you do buy this laptop, make sure to test it thoroughly to ensure it's working well. And I have a video on how to do that, which I'll post in the description below. So let's wrap up. If your budget is up to 700 US dollars and you do photo, video editing, or want a better gaming experience, this Asus ZenBook 14 is the number one laptop I would recommend for you. And for heaven's sake, don't let what happened to the IdeaPad 5 15 inch happen here. Buy it before it sells out. If you're planning to focus on computer coding though, or office work, I would go with the IdeaPad 515. It's a more comfortable device to use. The keyboard is better, the trackpad is more accurate, it has USB-C charging, and the bigger 15 inch screen is just more luxurious for productivity work. Plus, that laptop is crazy lightweight and portable anyway, even for a 15 inch. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up, and the notification bell. Until next time, I will catch you later.